the double-edged sword of AI optimism and ethical pitfalls. Introduction, the paradox of progress. Okay, so imagine it's 2021 and your city's police force announces a new partnership with Geolitica, formerly known as Predpol. This AI-driven software promises to predict where crime is likely to occur, optimizing police patrols and ensuring safer neighborhoods. The future of law enforcement, they say, has arrived. But fast forward to today, and headlines are flooded with critiques of predictive policing perpetuating systemic racial biases, particularly against communities of color. What looked like a technological leap seems more like a step back. Why? I'll try to answer that today, but first, let me introduce myself. I am Noble, a former Google developers expert in product strategy, and currently working by evangelizing data trust through responsible delivery of AI systems so that these tools are safe, harmless, and bring value to the lives of everyone. This goal is more complicated to achieve than you think. As a pragmatist, I find myself at the intersection of AI doomers and so-called techno-optimists. Fun fact, the two ideologies are pretty much the same, but the techno-optimists or accelerationalists are people who believe that technology leads to progress and solutions to all human needs. Any talk about tech ethics is the enemy, according to Mark Andreessen's recent Tech Optimist Manifesto. Let me use a structured framework to paint a picture of how techno-optimists think. There are four premises to their arguments. First, the facts. Premise. Techno-optimists believe that technological progress is inevitable and accelerating. They view developments like AI and policing as part of this inevitable march toward a technologically advanced future. Then the value premise. Here, they hold that this progress will inherently make society better. In the context of predictive policing, the value proposition is increased efficiency, cost savings, and enhanced community safety. There is the evaluation premise where techno-optimists argue that any glitches or issues in technology, such as hallucinations, misinformation, or biases in AI, can be efficiently quantified and fixed. They see these challenges as minor hurdles on the path to progress. Finally, the technology premise. They have this belief that continuous innovation is the answer to all of the socio-technical and societal challenges. In this utopian view, AI and policing is a marvel that epitomizes the positive impact of technology on law enforcement. However, is this the complete picture? The reality is more complex. As we've seen with predictive policing, the facts often reveal underlying biases. The value we attach to technology must be scrutinized, especially when it impacts societal equity. Evaluating technology's impact needs to be thorough and critical, not just optimistic. And lastly, we must question whether technology alone can solve deep-rooted societal issues. I'm purposefully anchoring on predictive policing today to showcase one example of the current harms of AI algorithms today. In the world of predictive policing, we've seen tech companies like Geolitica, previously known as Predpol, offer a promise of safer streets. They create algorithms, feed them with crime data, and voila, a daily prediction of where and when crimes are likely to occur. It sounds like a game changer, right? But let's pause and look closer at the reality in places like Plainfield, New Jersey. Here's the twist. Geolitica's crime prediction algorithm had a success rate of less than 1% in Plainfield. Out of over 23,000 predictions, fewer than 100 matched with actual reported crimes. It's like shooting an arrow in the dark and hoping it hits the bullseye. Captain David Guarino of the Plainfield PD put it bluntly, why did we get Predpol? I don't know that it did that. It turns out the tool they hoped would bring down crime rates wasn't just missing the mark. It was barely even getting close. Now, let's talk bias. Predictive policing software, like many AI systems, is only as good as the data it's fed. And guess what? This data often perpetuates existing biases. In 38 cities, 
Geolitica's software disproportionately targeted low-income Black and Latino neighborhoods. It's a classic case of tech amplifying societal issues, not solving them. And what about the practicality? In Plainfield, officers reported visiting just 129 of the 23,160 prediction locations. It's a staggering mismatch, raising questions about the real-world effectiveness of these predictions. As Dylan Reisman from the ACLU's Automated Injustice Project said, many tools sold to police departments are unreliable and worsen the inequalities of policing. But there's a glimmer of hope some cities are shifting towards more holistic approaches. Take Newark, New Jersey. They're using risk terrain modeling to match crime data with land use information, pinpointing factors that might be triggering crimes. This approach leads to solutions that aren't just about policing, but about improving community environments. As Andrew Ferguson, a law professor, aptly points out, the problem with predictive policing is the policing part. It's a reminder that addressing crime isn't just about predicting where it happens. It's about understanding the underlying causes and working towards solutions that uplift communities, not just patrol them. But let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. As a pragmatist, you recognize the value of AI. It's a tool with immense power to solve complex problems, from healthcare to transportation. So where does its value fit into our narrative? The answer lies in responsible AI, ethical, inclusive, and equitable. This is where techno-optimists need to plant their next pillar, equity, ensuring that technological advancements benefit all, not just a select few. Humans aren't perfect. And since we aren't perfect, we propagate our bias in the intelligent solutions we build. Police departments today use algorithms to help them figure out where to send resources. However, machine learning algorithms today are correlative, not causal. The algorithm can't understand if an arrest was unfair or unjust, it just sees an arrest. And the algorithm is going to send police where it thinks the crime is. But on its own, won't understand that traditionally this is where police have sent resources. For example, neighborhoods with a lot of people who look like me. Therefore, that's where they algorithms have seen most of the crime. Therefore, that's where law enforcement see the crime. Therefore, where they've made arrests. Therefore, more resources are sent to that location. Therefore, the data we have access to is traumatized. And the output of a machine learning algorithm leads to more prejudiced assumptions, leading to new harms amongst groups or individuals. The implication of all of this AI tech is laundering unjust data from an unjust criminal justice system, reinforcing a vicious cycle of racial bias. Meanwhile, whether Geolitica predicts a crime in an area or not, arrest rates remain the same. By the way, this vicious cycle is powered by what Dr. Nickel Turner Lee from the Brookings Institute calls traumatized data from these neighborhoods. Traumatized data refers to historical injustices baked into existing data sets that perpetuate harm when used in AI models. Amen. Let's talk about how the White House Executive Order fits into all of this. The White House Executive Order on AI brings a much needed perspective to the realm of AI, where possibilities seem limitless. It acknowledges AI's extraordinary potential for progress and peril, emphasizing the need for responsible use to harness its benefits while mitigating substantial risks. This approach is not just about the technological aspects. It reflects the principles of the people who build and use AI and the data upon which it is built. One critical area where this balance between potential and peril plays out is in predictive policing. The executive order explicitly mentions crime forecasting and predictive policing highlighting the integration of historical crime data into AI systems to predict high-density hotspots. This approach, while innovative, is not without its challenges. It brings to the fore questions of fairness, bias, and the societal impact of technology. Imagine a city like yours or mine, where predictive policing is in full swing. 
AI systems analyze vast amounts of historical crime data, identifying patterns and predicting future crime locations. On the surface, this is a powerful tool for law enforcement, promising a safer, more secure society. However, as the executive order subtly implies, the real challenge is ensuring these AI systems are developed and used responsibly. The order's eight guiding principles for the development and use of AI set a particularly relevant framework here. These principles call for AI that is safe, secure, equitable, and respectful of privacy, amongst others. They urge us to consider the broader implications of AI in our society, emphasizing the need for collaboration across government, private sector, academia, and civil society to govern AI development and use effectively. In our hypothetical city, the success of predictive policing hinges on more than just the accuracy of its algorithms. It depends on how these systems are designed, the data they use, and most importantly, the values they embody. It's about ensuring that the AI systems do not inadvertently reinforce existing biases or create new forms of inequality. It involves engaging with communities, understanding the socioeconomic context of crime, and developing AI in a way that aligns with our society's ideals of justice and fairness. The executive order challenges us to think deeply about the role of AI in our society. It's a call to action for a balanced approach, where innovation is coupled with responsibility and technological advancements are made with a keen awareness of their ethical and social implications. What can we do about all of this? We then hit a fork in the road. On one side, the techno giants are erecting walls around their kingdoms, filled with biased algorithms and SEO-driven narratives. On the other, we see communities on platforms like Reddit, where authentic, user-generated information thrives. I want to be a good ancestor of AI so that the BIPOC community is not left out of the benefits. Well, moving forward in this podcast, I aim to do five things. First, help bring awareness and help acknowledge biases. I will show examples of how AI is helping reduce or contribute to past injustice as a first step in correcting the issues stemming from technology, data, and algorithms. In some episodes, I may walk through legislation, techniques, and innovations that help debase these algorithms and audit for biases. Along the way, I aim to highlight companies and open source projects that further good data stewardship and promote model interpretability and data trust. Lastly, we need to keep centering the well-being of the black community in policymaking around artificial intelligence. So expect this podcast to bring on engaging black voices, members of the BIPOC community, advocates and organizations that help guard against decisions that could disproportionately harm or exclude. So where do we go from here? It's like we're at a major crossroads in a bustling city. Some cities such as Santa Cruz and New Orleans have already put up no entry signs to predictive policing by their governments. It's a big statement in the ongoing debate about responsible AI use. A debate that's no longer just a whisper in the corners, but a full-on conversation in the spotlight. And then there's the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, kind of like the superheroes of the digital world. They're not backing down from this fight, and neither should we. Because let's face it, the techno-optimists weren't entirely off the mark. Technology really does have the muscle to reshape our world. But the million-dollar question is, Reshape it for whom? This isn't just a question for today. It's a question we need to keep asking as we navigate the future of AI and policing. It's about making sure the future is not just intelligent, but also fair. Not just advanced, but just... And hey, if you're as curious as I am about what we can all do to make sure AI benefits everyone, not just the lucky few, let's make a deal. If this video racks up 1,000 likes, I'll dive right into the practical steps each one of us can take. Trust me, there's a lot we can do, and it's going to be an eye-opener. I need a favor. 
I am restarting this channel in hopes of getting a thousand subscribers in three months. So if you like this type of content, subscribe, like, and share your thoughts in the comments. And let's keep this conversation going. Because the future of AI isn't just written by code, it's written by us, all of us.